Now here's Yeomans again. Now Yeomans, uh, he died in 84, so I didn't have the pleasure. But these are the books that he, that, uh, he wrote or influenced. And um, in 1953, he wrote a book called The Key Line Plan, which was the first book on functional uh, landscape design ever written. And it's still one of the few books on functional landscape design ever written, unfortunately. And that part of your library is not that big. Um, and um, it's still a landscape that uh, we don't see much of. Um, certainly didn't see any of it driving down today. Um, we've got a little bit of over in Australia, but not that much. Um, it just goes to show, I mean, I've done an enormous amount of work, you know, planted millions of trees and worked on all these farms and whatnot, and, you know, I'll never run out of work. And if every one of you are here in this room did the same as me, you'd still never run out of work. I mean, the level of land degradation on this planet is just unfathomable. And if you're someone like me who drives like this, um, <laughs> you know... Um, I'm not a good person to drive with, you know, a bit dangerous. Um, I'm always looking out the window at these landscapes because that's, I'm, like today, I was just, I've got California redesigned. It's, um, it's if you let me do it, it'll be okay. Um, but, um, but, um, but the idea is not to let me do it, it's to let you guys all do it. And... The real idea is actually to allow the farmers to do it themselves. You know, they've got their, you know, sustainability is illegal after all. And, um, you know, so is water harvesting on farmers. You know, it makes it really difficult for farmers to actually um, develop sustainable systems when we've got such ridiculous laws in place, and uh, especially regarding water. Fortunately, at the moment, there's no law against creating soil. Um, I'm still waiting for that, um, um, but anyway. But there's very few trees in our landscape. We're, well, I think we're allowed to plant trees, aren't we? Um, that's something we're allowed to do. We're allowed to create soil. Um, we're barely allowed to um, not use chemicals. Um, at least in Australia, uh, a lot of the banks stop um, farmers from not using chemicals. I've got a good joke for you, actually. Well, you mightn't you might think it's that good um, because of my sense of humour. What's, what's the difference between, a, um, what's, what's the difference between um, God and an agronomist? You don't know? Of course you don't know. Um, <laughs> God doesn't think he's an agronomist. Um, <laughs> you could probably say the same, you know, what's the difference between God and a permaculturalist? Well, you know... <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite fair too. Um, but a lot of our landscapes um, are there ripe for the, um, for the picking. And, um, and these, all of these books and all of our permaculture stuff, I mean, all of it's there. We, you know, we really don't need to go looking. We've got enough knowledge to do all of this stuff. Um, it's just a matter of having the key people um, who make decisions about allowing this sort of stuff um, to make, to allow it to happen. So, 58, we've got the challenge of landscape. 68, you've got water for every farm. Um, really good book, that one. And then 71, Yeomans writes a bit of a cracker um, called The City Forest, which is where he applies the key line water harvesting scenario planning tools to city landscapes. Now, someone just said tonight that you've got all these fires and everything threatening your poor water systems because you've got all of your, you've got all of your eggs in one basket, another ridiculous um, um, act of modernity um, where we put all of our eggs in one basket. Like we have one reservoir for, or two reservoirs for 100,000 people and no one has rainwater tanks and uh, no one, um, um, what, what was the catchphrase, you know, stop it, store it and sink it or something like that, one of those things. Spread it, yeah, all that. Slip, slop, slap, um, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, you know, it seems quite bizarre to me when you've got um, 90 to 100% efficient runoff surfaces in cities, in towns, and you've still got the same landscape as you have in a farm. 
we still got the same opportunities to harvest and catch and store water in, in cities, in both open bodies of water as ponds and also in, um, in tanks and all of that, but no one does it. I mean, it's just... And yet, you know, it's quite likely that as a result of losing all of that forest up there, that your, your trees, that, that you've now got any, no trees up there, that's going to reduce the amount of rain, rainfall that you're going to get straight off the bat. It's going to increase the amount of runoff, but it's also going to increase the amount of silt, which is going to fill up your bloody reservoir, isn't it? And, um, and you're going to be left wanting, which is a bit crazy. That's, um, and then you're going to have um, engineers running around doing what I call designing on the run, sort of crisis management. Um, when we've got more than enough water hitting this town that's not being harvested, that's not being um, made available, and uh, therefore having multiple resources as opposed to that's of, of, uh, of op multiple options for water as opposed to one or two.